how to make Bungie, my old clunky crossbow, a little bit quieter, and how you can make your crossbow a little quieter too, maybe. That is this episode of Death by Bungie. <laughs> Death by Bungie is brought to you by Clover, feeding whitetail deer for thousands of years. If you're new to crossbow hunting, if you are an old hand at crossbow hunting, you are probably familiar with the fact that crossbows are pretty loud. They are loud weapons compared to other types of bows. If you are moving to crossbow hunting from a compound bow, you're probably thinking, wow, this thing is loud. The fact of the matter is crossbows are louder than compound bows. That's one of the downsides to crossbow hunting. When I was hunting in Maryland with my nephew, Nick, some of you may have seen that episode. If you haven't, you can go back and check our old hunts. I can remember one afternoon I was sitting over the field looking out over the Milo. My nephew was down at another tree stand, probably 100 yards away, and I actually heard his crossbow fire. I heard his shot go off, and that was when I learned later on, I got a text from him saying he had shot at a nice buck. We recovered it later that evening. A really nice big old buck in Maryland. It was a lot of fun. And I, but I heard the crossbow go off, even though he wasn't near me, I could tell that he had taken a shot. Now, manufacturers will call it silencing your crossbow. These are different tools that you can use, different ways that you can silence your crossbow. I'm here to tell you, don't get your hopes up. You're not going to silence your crossbow. These things, like I have said before, Bungie is loud and proud. Uh, it, it barks the minute you pull the trigger, everybody in the area knows that you just took a shot. We can quiet it down a little bit, but silencing it, I think that's going a little bit too far. I don't think that is realistic. I get this question an awful lot. People asking me, how can I make my crossbow a little bit quieter? I'm just surprised at how loud it is. I get to ask that question all the time on our Facebook page. I get it frequently asked here on the YouTube channel as well. And so this video is going to address that and see what we can do about making our crossbows a little bit quieter. Now, first off, why do we care? Why do we care whether these crossbows are loud or not? Well, we're hunting with archery equipment and unlike rifles, where the deer is probably dead on its feet before the sound even gets there because bullets travel so much faster than the speed of sound, arrows do not exceed the speed of sound, plain and simple. There are no arrows that are going to go faster than the speed of sound. So we have to be concerned about a thing called deer jumping the string or ducking the string. In other words, are they going to hear the sound of the crossbow, hear the sound of the arrow leaving the crossbow, and then move before the arrow gets there? And that's a distinct possibility. It has happened to me. It probably will happen to you during your hunting career as well. Watch my other videos I've done on jumping the string and some of the things that have gone along with that. I've got videos on here about hunts that I've been on where that's been an issue. In the end, it really hasn't kept me from taking those deer home but it has changed what I thought was going to happen. It has changed the dynamic a little bit. So it is something we're concerned about. And so the question becomes, if we quiet down the crossbow, does that mean that we can take those same shots and the deer won't hear the crossbow and won't duck the string? Is that something that is possible? Let's not lose sight of the fact that the speed of sound is like 1,100 feet per second, 1,125 feet per second. The fastest crossbows on a market travel around 400 feet per second. So they're like a third the speed of sound, 500 feet per second is a big barrier that will soon be reached. But still, keep in mind, even at that speed, we are half, less than half, the speed of sound. So the arrow is not going to get there before the sound gets there, no matter what. So now we look at options like quieting the crossbow. So let's look at some of the ways we can quiet these crossbows. What can we do to remove that twang? That's what I always refer to it as. When you fire this crossbow, you hear that twang, that certain sound. When I fire this crossbow, it sounds a lot like this. Okay, that's kind of what I hear. So that sound is what we're trying to reduce. Can we change that sound? Can we reduce it? That sort of thing. Now, I've already gone and installed a bunch of little gadgets on this crossbow. Bungie has gotten a facelift of sorts, and I'm going to talk to you about that in this video, describe what I've added, and I'm also going to tell you whether or not it was successful, whether it made any difference. I'll describe that for you in this video. But before I get to that, are there things that we can do that don't involve buying new gadgets or doing anything drastic in terms of installing anything on the crossbow. And there's a few things I want to point out before we get too deep in this. Things that you can do that are free or are very, very cheap, basically, that you can do to your crossbow to quiet it down a little bit. 
Keeping in mind that the sound that you hear, sound is just vibration. Now these crossbows, any crossbow, stores a lot of energy. When you cock that string back under 175 pounds draw weight, the equivalent of lifting 175 pounds, hold it right there with this trigger assembly, and then you release that string with a pull of the trigger, what's going to happen? You're releasing all of that energy. These limbs are going to vibrate like nobody's business. The string vibrates. The arrow retention spring right here is going to vibrate. The stirrup is going to vibrate, right? Everything makes a sound on this crossbow. Basically, that's why I've always mentioned here, I've mentioned frequently, you're going to want to go through and tighten up all the bolts on your crossbow before you go hunting. Make sure that everything is tight. You don't want to get out there in the woods and find out that one of your limbs is loose or that your scope has vibrated loose or anything like that. So that brings me to my first tip you're going to want to go through and make sure you tighten up all of the different bolts and screws on your crossbow with your Allen wrenches that came with it with the appropriate wrenches or Allen wrenches, whatever it takes. Go through and tighten everything up before you go hunting. If there's something loose, a little bit of vibration, that's only going to increase the volume of your crossbow, the perceived loudness or the sound that your crossbow pushes out there. So tighten everything up. In fact, if you shoot it enough, you get sort of familiar with the sound of your crossbow. And every once in a while, you'll shoot it and you'll get this sort of sensation, this feeling that that didn't really sound the way it normally sounds. There was a time before I went to Maryland, I was shooting and I had a loose limb and it sounded different to me. And I was having problems with my accuracy, but it was because one of the limbs was loose. Now this is a real curved crossbow, it wasn't the end of the world, but tightening that up, checking that before I went out and shot would have fixed the problem, would have avoided that problem. But I'll never forget the difference in sound when that happened. So it's something that I listened for. So you'll want to do that too. Sort of pay attention to what your crossbow sounds like. And if it doesn't sound quite right, let's look it over and make sure everything's right. You will also notice that there's no quiver on Bungie right now. Now, that's not because I'm hunting or anything like that. It's actually because I took the quiver off to put it on this stand right here so that I can talk to you in this video. But a quiver can be a little bit loose. That can actually be an extra piece of equipment that is going to cause some vibration, maybe increase the sound a little bit. When I'm hunting on the ground, I always take the quiver off, put it in the blind next to me. I don't want it in the way of hunting. Sometimes I'll even take it off when I'm in the tree stand, hang it on a limb next to me just to sort of set it off out of the way. Occasionally I'll have the quiver on because it does help me rest crossbow a little bit better on the shooting rail if I'm going to take a shot off of the shooting rail. And one of the things you're going to want to pay attention to if that's the case is having a padded shooting rail. Make sure you got a pad on there because that will reduce the vibration as well. If you have your crossbow sitting on your metal shooting rail, take a shot there in your tree stand, it's going to vibrate, make a lot more loud sound than it would if it had a pad across that shooting rail. So just make sure you got those pads installed there in good shape. Double check them before you go out hunt and make sure the squirrels haven't eaten them up or anything like that. That's always a good idea. Duct tape or electrical tape can help you quiet your crossbow a little bit. And this is what I mean by that. Some people have taken to put electrical tape or duct tape on their stirrups. The stirrup vibrates. It's like a ring sticking off the end of your crossbow and all that vibration is transferred to the end of the crossbow. You're absorbing a lot on the stock end, on the butt end, because you're holding it, but this is just hanging out there and it's almost like a triangle. Remember that when you were in elementary school and they hit that little triangle with a, with a striker or whatever, you hit it and it'd go ding and it would vibrate. That vibration is the same thing that's going on with your stirrup. So you can reduce that a little bit by putting a coat of electrical tape or duct tape over that. The other thing you can do is put a little piece of duct tape or electrical tape on your arrow retention spring because that spring, that's going to vibrate. It's going to make some sound. You can reduce that with a little bit of electrical tape. I wouldn't put much on there. You don't want to interfere. Nothing you do should interfere with the performance of your crossbow. I'll talk about that in a little bit too because you are going to slow it down with some of these gadgets. But let's put a little piece of electrical tape on there if you wanted to. You could do that to quiet that down. I haven't done that here. The other thing you can look at is you can buy that plastic stuff at the hardware stores where you dip your tools, you dip your pliers in there and put a little rubber handle on your pliers. Great idea. You can do that right here with the stirrup. You can do the same thing with your arrow retention spring. Another thing we can do without spending a whole lot of money is we can go back to a heavier broadhead. Now I've gone from 150 grains down to a 100 grain broadhead. You can go back to the 150 grain. The 150 grain is going to be a little bit quieter because it's a heavier arrow that is requiring more energy, absorbing more energy as it's shooting that arrow down the shooting rail, pushing it out towards your target. You're going to slow your crossbow down. Okay. That is going to be a effect of doing that, but you can reduce your vibration, reduce the sound coming off that crossbow by going back to a heavier, or continuing to use in your case, if that's the case, a heavier arrow. Same thing with a heavier broadhead or whatever, whichever, or a combination thereof. The more weight you're pushing off the end of this, the slower it's going to be. You're going to have to recite it in, of course, but you will quiet it down a little bit. Make no 
Mistake here though, we do not exceed the manufacturer's recommendations in terms of the overall weight of your arrow. Don't use more than what the manufacturer says you should use. You also don't want to go lower than what the minimum is that your manufacturer says. Does that DC? You don't want to exceed or DC? You don't want to go below the manufacturer's minimum. You don't want to exceed the manufacturer's minimum. Stink, make sure you're right in the right range with them. That's the best for your crossbow, it's best for your safety, and it's going to give you the best performance overall. Now, what about brace height? The last video I posted on this channel was about brace height. Go check that out if you haven't seen it already. All crossbows have a recommended or preferred brace height from the manufacturer. You want to stay in that range. Does it have an effect on volume? And the answer to that, because I bought a little volume meter, a little decibel meter to test this with, and we ran some tests. We ran some tests before I put all of the sound dampening gear on here that I'm going to talk to you about. My daughter and I, Genevieve, went out there in the yard and she helped me run some tests. We took the decibel meter, she ran that, to determine how loud the crossbow was at an arm's length from the crossbow. How loud was it there when fired, both at the brace height all the way forward, brace height all the way back. And we also ran the same test at 20 yards to see if there was much difference. And it was surprising. It was not what I expected. The results were that with the brace height all the way forward, in other words, a short brace height, it was actually a little bit quieter than with the brace height all the way back. But it really didn't make much difference. I almost thought it would be the reverse. I figured it would be louder with the brace height all the way forward because you're asking more out of the bow. You're increasing the travel, the string travel and all that, increasing your power stroke, and that's going to increase the amount of energy that's transferred out. But maybe it's because that increase in power stroke actually is absorbing more energy, pushing more energy into the arrow because the arrow is going a little bit faster with the shorter brace height. I mentioned that in the previous video. Maybe that absorbs more energy. I don't know. But for whatever reason, it was a little bit quieter. Now, not much. I want to talk to you about the numbers. Let's go over the exact numbers here. For all of these tests, I want to point out that Genevieve was off to my left, about 20 yards away. She was standing in the same spot for all of the tests. And then she was at, at we ran them both with her at 20 yards and then with her right here at arm's length from the crossbow. But the reason I had her 20 yards off to the left was I wanted to sort of determine how loud the crossbow is 20 yards away if you're taking a shot at a deer. Now, ideally, I'd be able to measure that 20 yards in front of me, downrange, where the arrow, right at the target. But I couldn't do that for two reasons. Number one, it's obviously not safe to have Genevieve standing down range by the target when I'm taking shots at the target. That wouldn't be bright. That wouldn't be real smart. So I'm not going to run that test. The other reason I couldn't do that, though, was because of the sound of the arrow hitting the target is pretty loud. And that thwack of the arrow hitting the target, that would interfere with the test. I wouldn't know if I was testing the sound of the crossbow or the sound of the target. With her off to the left, I'm confident we were hearing that we were testing the volume of the crossbow as it was hitting, as, as it was firing and not the sound of the target. That's why she was off to the left. So for, but for those tests, here's the thing. The greater brace height, I took three shots, 108.1, 105.3, and 109.8 decibels, averaging about 107.73 decibels. Okay. And then I moved the brace height all the way. That was with the, with the greater brace height. With the brace height all the way forward, I shot at 106.7, 107.2, and 108.0, averaging 107.3 decibels. Now, at 20 yards away, with Genevieve off to the left of the crossbow, about 20 yards away, the shots there were a lot quieter. We were talking there about 81 decibels, 81.6 decibels, 78.6 decibels, 79.6 decibels, averaging 79.93 decibels. In other words, just about just under 80 decibels at 20 yards. And that was with the greater brace height. With the lower brace height, it dropped down to 77.1, 81.7, and 78.6 decibels, which according to my math, averages 79.13 decibels. A couple interesting things that we can take away from that, right? Two different things. Number one, the brace height. I was surprised. A shorter brace height was actually a little quieter, but not much. 0.4 decibels at the crossbow. So less than half a decibel. It really isn't making much difference. But look at the difference when we go out to 20 yards. We're dropping from the hundreds 
down to the 70s. That's huge going out to 20 yards. That means the crossbow is way louder close to you than it is 20 yards away. Now, that's not surprising, but let's put this in perspective a little bit. The 70s, a loud conversation, two people having a heated discussion. That's the high 70s, right? That's a, the high 70s range of volume, okay? Perceived loudness, right? That's how this, I, I'm not an expert on this. I'm no scientist, but I got the decibel meter and I looked up what these meet, what these different readings would mean and what they're the equivalent of. So I can kind of see what I'm dealing with here. And that's basically what I take away from it. A loud conversation is going to be in the seventies, probably the high seventies. So that's how loud your crossbow is with no sound deadening system on it whatsoever out at 20 yards. Compare that to the 100s at the crossbow fired there. There we're talking about a clap of thunder at 120 decibels, 110 decibels. So we're going from the volume of thunder down to the volume of a loud conversation from when we go from the crossbow out at 20, then I'll go out to 20 yards. That's the difference. Also putting it in perspective, where do crossbows rate compared to rifles? A 22 caliber rifle, from what I've read, about 140 decibels, okay? Way louder than the crossbow. All right, so what are some of the add-ons we can do to go to step further and quieting the crossbow a little bit more? There are all manner of add-ons, like I said. Manufacturers vary, the names vary, but there's a lot of different things you can do. Every manufacturer has something. Check with your crossbow manufacturer first. Use what your crossbow manufacturer recommends. There's no reason to do anything other than that. I would always start with that. But there's all different kinds of things that you can put on here. The first thing we look at is the string. How can we make the string a little bit quieter? Cat whiskers are a popular alternative. Bungie here shoots a Flemish string that actually comes manufactured with cat whiskers sort of built into the string. They're very little and they have a little bit of effect on reducing the vibration upon the firing of the crossbow. You can get add-on cat whiskers kind of look like a spinner bait for those of you who fish. They're big rubber things, big long jangly looking fingers you put on there and you can hang them on your strings. Stuff like that attached to the string or to the limbs is going to slow the crossbow down a little bit, but it will also reduce that vibration and it will make it a little bit quieter. I chose to go instead of with those jangly things with a thing called string stars. You can see those installed here on Bungie. Bungie. I have one on each side of the serving, an equidistant from the serving. That's how they were supposed to be installed about an inch and a half from the serving. So I've got them installed on there and they're in there tight too. They ain't coming out of there because you're actually got them under load under a stressed string now and they are pinched right in there good but they're rubber and they will reduce the string vibration somewhat they're called string stars i bought the excalibur ones this is an excalibur crossbow you certainly do not have to do that there are other companies that make all of these different products similarly i have the ravs system here installed these are these big rubber fingers on the limbs that are mounted right on the limbs they stick up when you fire this bad boy those things are going to absorb all that vibration and sort of because uh, of rubber and but they're they look kind of cool they're these big things sticking up off of there you want them both you know the same distance from the ends because if you move any of this stuff you're gonna have to recite in your crossbow because i think if you moved this couple of inches you'd probably be stressing that limb a little bit differently than you were before so once you got to move put in the place where you want them try and get them even and leave them alone. Don't monkey with them after that. Once they're on there though, they've not gotten in the way of shooting the crossbow. I think they look kind of cool and they go quite a ways in absorbing that vibration and quieting down the crossbow. These are called a RAVS system, R-A-V-S. I know that they work. They're from Excalibur, recommended by the manufacturer. And I bought them as part of a kit to install on this crossbow and they work pretty good. Some people call those limb dampeners. Other companies refer to those as limb savers, but either way, they sort of accomplish the same purpose. They absorb some of the vibration from the limbs. String stoppers, another thing that I've added to this crossbow. Now I've had these in the past. I owned a set of these before. Actually, this is the same set. I reinstalled them. Originally I had installed them on here and then I took them off because it didn't really seem to make the crossbow quieter, at least not to my ear. Instead, it just made it sound different. It made it sound more metallic when I fired it. And remember I was telling you, I kind of like the sound of it. You get used to the sound of it a certain way and it changed that sound. I just didn't like it, but I've reinstalled them so that I can test the overall package. I'm going to leave them on now. They also, you got to be careful if you have those on there because they do interfere somewhat with your brace height. If your limbs start to relax, your string starts to creep a little bit. i mentioned that in a previous video about brace height, but if your brace height starts to change, it can start impacting that and stressing, uh, push, pushing against the air brakes. So to avoid that, you got to keep an eye on your brace height. 
I mentioned before, rubberized stirrup. It's kind of cool, actually. I just took the old stirrup off, put this one on. This one is rubberized, will reduce vibration somewhat. That was part of the kit that I bought directly from the manufacturer. Also, the X shocks from Excalibur. Now, these have different names from different manufacturers again, but these go in the corners of your limbs where the limbs make contact with the string, and they're an added way for the limbs to sort of stop the vibration of that string and come to a complete rest, a complete quiet stop. And they're made of foam and these are sort of stick in there. Now, these say in the instructions to wait 24 hours after installing them before you fire that. I can tell you from experience, you do want to wait the 24 hours. Because what happened was while I was shooting this and testing this, I'll give you the results in just a second here. While I was doing that, one of them fell off. So, and I haven't found it in the yard yet. So, you do want to wait the 24 hours. I have a new pair of them on order so I can replace the missing one and have a spare. That'll be great. But, and again, different manufacturers call them different things. But go ahead and look at these two. This is another little add-on that you can put in the corners. They're not real expensive. I think they're like 20 bucks. But you can sort of fit them into the corners if your crossbow doesn't already have those. And probably the biggest difference is the installation of dissipator pads or air brakes on the front of the crossbow. Here you got to take the limbs off, got to unstring it, take the limbs off. If you have a compound crossbow with the cams, you're going to want to take that to a shop, have all this work done, I think, unless you're really savvy, in which case I applaud you and I think that's awesome. But I, these, I was able to do this on my own here. I just unstrung the crossbow, took the string off, took the limbs off, which was a, really works your hands good because those, those screws were in there good, let me tell you what. Took that all apart though, installed these air brakes on here. These are actually just called dissipator pads for this model. Installed them according to the instructions, got that done, and they're in place. Now, when I unstring the crossbow, if I unstring the crossbow and let it rest, I'm probably going to take the limbs back off to let those pads rest a little bit. And over time, you may want to replace those pads if they get too compressed. Because if I unstring a crossbow, it's going to really, really push energy against those pads. So I probably, if I unstring this crossbow, probably would uninstall the limbs and those dissipator pads to rest those a little bit too. But that's something I can sort of address when I decide to do that. Until then, I can tell you that these, from what I've read, make the biggest difference in terms of sound reduction. Now, what does this stuff do to your crossbow? Does it make it quieter? I'll tell you in just a second. I was pleasantly surprised. Sort of mixed reviews on the overall result, though. But I will tell you one thing it does is it adds weight. This crossbow weighed about 8 pounds before I installed all of these doohickeys. And then with them all put in place, it's about 9 pounds. Rough, okay? That's not an exact measurement. But I can tell you it adds weight to your crossbow. Adding weight is going to reduce vibration. Adding weight is going to quiet your crossbow. The mere fact that it weighs more now is going to make it a little bit quieter. But also, these gadgets do add up to reduce the overall sound, the overall perceived loudness, I guess is the proper terminology from what I read. But the overall sound is going to change a little bit when you fire your crossbow. It's going to sound different, and it is going to give you different numbers. Just to illustrate that, before I had this stuff on here, this is what the crossbow sounded like. And it went from that to this. Now, that alone doesn't tell you everything. You can hear sort of the difference in the tone, in the quality of the sound. Before it was very harsh, very abrupt. Now, when I fire the crossbow, it's a much more deadened, quieter sound. Now, what are the numbers? What difference does it make in terms of the overall, the re, what's the reality here? What's the science behind this? What do the numbers say, right? With that little decibel meter. Again, Genevieve, right here one arm's length from the crossbow, firing it with all this gear installed. Genevieve at 20 yards, same decibel meter at 20 yards. With Genevieve right at the crossbow with all the stuff installed, we were looking at 94, 96.9, and 92.7 decibels, which averaged around 94 and a half decibels. Now, that goes from 107 decibels, remember before, without this jazz all installed, down to 94 decibels considerably louder, about 13 decibels quieter. And when we talk in terms of the scale of decibels, every 10 decibels over 70 doubles the sound. So going from the 90s, the mid 90s, to the mid 100s, a reduction of 13 or so is more than half a reduction in volume and perceived loudness. I know it seems confusing because those numbers are kind of odd. It's odd that they would have a scale that way, but that's the way the scale is. So it's really half as loud, more than half as loud, or less than half as loud, if that makes sense. It's actually reduced it, it's cut it right in half. But it's still at the volume of your lawnmower. 
Now it's an abrupt sound, but it's a lot quieter than thunder. But we're now in the terms of, uh, we're way beyond a loud conversation at the crossbow. We're still in the lawnmower category. Now, what about 20 yards away? 20 yards away, Genevieve measured the following number. She measured 75.9 decibels, 76.9 decibels, and 75.9 decibels once again, averaging 76.2 decibels. Now, before it was 79 and a half decibels. Now we're down to an average of 76.2 decibels. The reduction was only about three decibels. It was only about three decibels quieter than it was without all the gear installed. We're still in the loud conversation co category at 20 yards. It really didn't make any significant difference. And this is what I want to point out one last thing about this when we talk about these numbers. Remember, at the crossbow, with all the gear installed to make this thing as quiet as possible, 96 decibels was where we were at. The average compound bow anymore is less than 85 decibels. So the compound bow coming off the shelf sold by the manufacturer is half as loud as this crossbow is with all this quieting material on here. That I hope helps kind of put it in perspective, even with all this stuff on here. And I can tell you it's a lot more fun to shoot it because it is quieter and it sounds a little bit different. It'll take me a little bit of time to get used to that different tone that I'm hearing. But it's still, according to the decibel meter, twice as loud as a compound bow. And I think that's pretty consistent across the board from what I've read about crossbows. They are just louder and they are technically, technically now, twice as loud. Again, that's because 85 decibels is actually, when you go from 85 to 95, you've doubled the perceived loudness. You haven't doubled the decibels, but you've doubled the perceived loudness. So technically 95 decibels is twice as loud as 85. I, I didn't, I didn't make the scale up. That's just how it works. Okay. So don't, don't complain about that. that. That just is what it is. But nevertheless, the bottom line is this thing is really about twice as loud as a compound bow as it sits right now with all of this equipment installed. All right, you may have noticed that I am sweating pretty good. It's a nice muggy summer here in northeastern Pennsylvania. So I'm going to put this video to rest here, but I'm going to close with four different thoughts that I have about this whole little experiment and sort of wrap up what I think about this whole process. Number one, we aren't going to make our crossbows, at least not at this stage of the game, as quiet as compound bows. Too much energy is being stored. So when you shoot, there's too much vibration, too much sound. And as you can see, this crossbow, 10 decibels louder or more than the average compound bow coming off the market. Second important takeaway here, at 20 yards, it really didn't make much difference. I don't think you're increasing your chances of getting a second shot. You're not getting a second shot on the deer you shoot at with this. It's not going to make that much difference. And it's not going to make much difference. It made almost no difference at 20 yards. So the, it doesn't change the volume for the deer that might jump the string. It doesn't change the volume, from what I can see, for that deer that might be waiting in the wings. That tells me point number three, I stick with what I said before, take shorter shots. Dr. Grant Woods, if you watch Growing Deer TV here on YouTube, will be releasing a video in the near weeks here, in the coming weeks. So, and it might be out this week for all I know, it might be this video out, but here he has a video coming soon, which I think will back up what I've said about taking long shots, about reaction time for deer. And it will also show you that even with the fastest of crossbows, you run a risk of the arrow not hitting where you think it's going to hit with a longer shot. Deer are going to react faster than arrows, even at 400 feet per second. Quieting this thing down, this sort of backs that up to me, what I've been saying about taking shorter shots, you aren't gonna quiet this down enough to change the deer's reaction. It's still gonna react at 20 yards, still gonna have the same reaction time and anything over a 20, 30 yard shot, when you're looking at 40 yard shots and beyond, you're really asking for trouble. So I, I still recommend stick with shorter shots. Everybody, I know there's, there's manufacturers out there telling you how great long shots are and how their crossbows are actually rifles and all that good stuff. You wanna believe that, that's just fine. Doesn't Nothing here convinces me that's the case. Nothing I've seen out of those crossbows. In fact, the Raven crossbows, a local dealer, I spoke with the owners of a shop here locally who sell the Raven crossbows. I was speaking with them and I asked them, they were telling me that they had shot the crossbow at 60 yards. It was amazing at 60 yards. I asked them, do you think the deer can hear it at 60 yards? And he said, oh yeah, <laughs> that was his response. It wasn't, eh, probably, it was, oh yeah. So in other words, they're loud too, you know, and at 60 yards, a deer can hear it, it's still going to react. 60 yards, I don't care how fast your arrow is. Sound beats it there, gives it plenty of time to react. And that video from Dr. Grant Woods should back that up if I am correct. So watch for that. 
I'll be talking about it down the road here too. Like the Facebook page for Death by Bungie if you haven't already, and I'll probably post a link to that video, probably stir up some discussion about that concept on the Facebook page. And the last thing I wanted to know about this though, the last point that I wanted to make about all this gear, about the installation of all this gear is that I think for this season, this book is not closed and I'm gonna leave this gear on here and hunt with it this season. At least when I go to Maryland, I'm gonna leave this gear on and who knows, if I hunt there several days, I might get the opportunity to test in the field and see if that deer that's waiting in the wings presents itself and I get, for the first time ever, two shots in one day at a deer. Two shots in one evening, for example. Take a shot at a deer, that deer runs off. 15, 20 minutes later, a second deer comes in because he wasn't affected by the first shot, didn't hear the loud first shot. Maybe we'll get some anecdotal evidence that this is true, that this is actually a benefit. I'll let you know, and the only thing that you can do to find out is subscribe to Death by Bungie if you haven't already. Like the Facebook page. And thank you for watching this long, sweaty video. And until next time, all hail Bungie! And that's actually the first tip that I have for you about trying to make your crossbow a little bit quieter. Bees are showing up, I guess. We had rain before, now we're dealing with bees.